Hello, everybody, and welcome to the very first episode in Reptile Equals Diamond, uh, named after the ever lovely card Damage Equals Reptile. And so, if you're unfamiliar, the title is, of course, a reference to what we're trying to achieve, and that is take reptiles all the way to Diamond, specifically Diamond 1, because I hate myself. Um, that said, the idea was, what is the most obscure, do-nothing sort of attribute slash type that I could think of, and how can I get it all the way to Diamond and showcase my suffering in the attempts to do so? And that conclusion was left me with reptile, sea serpent, and fish, and of course, I found Reptile to be the most incoherent and strange of all of them, although it does do some funny, interesting things, which we'll get to see later, and you'll get to see throughout the entire series. But, that said, it, we are trying to hit Diamond with, of course, the ever-lovely Reptiles, specifically Octoatic, Reptilian, and Alien, because those are the three big Reptile archetypes. We are not doing Venom-based things. Um, but this is the starting deck list. As we progress through this series, and I inevitably have to update it, tweak things, etc., etc., I will, of quote, course, post changes to the deck list. That said, let us hop into the first iteration of the deck, and I'll give you the card by card. So, first up, we have Reptilian Lamia. If it's in your hand, and all monsters you control are face-up reptile monsters, minimum one, unfortunately, you get to target a face-up monster your opponent controls, make its attack zero, and then special summon it, and then you take damage equal to that monster's original attack. And if it's sent to the graveyard as a synchro material, you get to target two face-up monsters on the field, change their attack to zero, um, which is really great for OTK things, as well as using your reptilian effects um, to search, etc., etc. Lamy is great, she's a level two tuner, and, you know, we love level two tuners. We then have one reptilian Niami. Uh, during the main phase, if you can have a reptile in your grave, quick effect, you get to pitch it from your hand to the graveyard, target a face-up monster your opponent controls, change its attack to zero. Um, and then if your opponent controls a monster with zero attack, you can special this from your grave. Uh, unfortunately, you can only use one effect per turn and only once per turn because uh, Konami hates us. Um, don't ask me. I didn't write the card. I sure as heck wish it was uh, you could only use one of, use each effect once per turn instead of just one. Um, she's just a good level 2 extender, which is very nice. Um, additionally, she can blank monster attacks, which does come up sometimes. Um, we're on three copies of Ash Blossom. We need some interruptions here. You know, we, we gotta have something, um, because we're not doing a whole lot. Uh, one alien kit, this is mostly as a tribute for, uh, planet polluting virus, so that we can, uh, you know, skill drain and baguska our opponent for three turns with, uh, Slicer. Um, he, he's basically a vanilla, but he has alien in the name and he's level four, so that's why we're playing it. We are on three copies of Nunu, the Octomatic Remnant. This card's actually really good. You can pitch it from your hands, send a dark reptile from your deck to your grave. And then additionally, if you have no monsters or you own, or you control an Ogdoatic, you can special it from your grave, but banish it when it leaves the field. And uh, while it's faced upon the field, you can only special summon reptiles. Uh, spoiler alert, uh, we're pretty much only going to be making reptiles when uh, this bad boy's on the field, so it's completely fine. Um, now you, uh, the Ogdoatic Remnant, uh, you can send it from your hand to the grave, pitch a light reptile from your deck to the grave, uh, which is the opposite of Nunu. Um, and then if it's normal or special, you get to add an Ogdoatic Spell Trap from your deck to your hand. Uh, there's a really good one, and it's, uh, Water Lily, but we'll get into that later. Uh, and you can only use each effect once per turn. Uh, Nunu's great, it's another level 4. It's fantastic. One Flogus, the, uh, Ogdoatic bound Boundless. Uh, if it's sent from Field or Grave, or Special Summoned from the Grave, you get to target a monster your opponent controls and one monster in their graveyard that with equal or higher attacks, special summon the monster from the Grave to their field, and if you do, you send the other one. One, additionally, if it's in the Grave, you can send a card from your hand to the Grave, and then add it to your hand. Uh, which is which is nice. It comes up. It's a level four again. It does matter. Uh, and then we have one Zoha, the Ogdoatic Boundless. Uh, if it's sent from the field or grave or a special summon from the grave, um, your opponent draws a card, and then you get to add an Ogdoatic Monster from deck to hand, which is a really fucking terrible Stratos. But you know we got to make it work. Um, so yeah, he's he's fine. He's a really bad Stratos, but you know we'll make him work. Uh, one Reptilian Codely. If you control a Dark Reptile Monster, just summon it for free. And if your opponent controls any monsters with zero attack, you can special summon an equal number of reptilian monsters from your hand, and you can only use that effect once per turn. Um, she's also a level four tuner, which is really, really, really good. Um, again, level fours, uh, we want to get to King of the Feral Imps as much as possible, but, you know, she's awesome. Um, we have one Night Sword Serpent. Uh, if it's sent to the graveyard by a card effect, you can special it, but banish it when, the, when it leaves the field. Um, this card's fantastic. You can send it off Snake Rain, instant level four. Uh, and then you can just, you know, go into more things. Um, one Reptilian Vasky, uh, it can't be normal or special, or normal summoner set, can't be special summoner except by tributing face-up monsters 
two face-up monsters with zero attack from anywhere in the field. And once per turn, you can select and destroy one face-up monster your opponent controls, and there can only be one of it face-up on the field. Spoiler alert, we're only playing one, so that doesn't matter. That. Um, it's a level 8, which is great for going into the rank 8 pool, pool for OTKs, as well as other things, as well as just cleaning up boards. boards. Additionally, tributing off your opponent's monsters that have zero attack is really, really good and just great removal. Um, we then have one uh, Karusu, the Octobotic Light. If it's in your graveyard, you can tribute a monster, special summon it, and then your opponent special summons one monster from their graveyard, but negate its effects. And if it's special summon, you get to target a level 4 lower Octobotic in your grave, special summon it, it's once per turn. Um, but he's fine, he's another level 8 extender. Um, he gets you to other things, like level 4, like you can bring back uh, Nunu, uh, Nunu, Nayaya, sorry, I can't remember the, all the names, um, and then get a spell, which is great. Um, one Illyrit, uh, the Octobotic Dark. Uh, if it's in your graveyard, tribute this monster, special summon this card, and then your opponent gets to add a monster from your graveyard to their hand, which really sucks, but you know, you, you gotta do it. I don't know why all these cards have drawbacks on their special summon. Uh, Konami just hates us. Um, if it's special summon, you also get to target two of your banished monsters, including a reptile, and return them to the grave, which is nice. Uh, great for recursion for things like uh, Serpent and Nuya yeah, when they get banished. Uh, we have one copy of Therian Empress Alicia. Um, you can target a Therian or a Reptile in your grave, special summon it from your hand, um, and equip the equipped monster. Uh, this is great for equipping things like Zoha and uh, Flogus. And then, uh, you know, Xyz thing for a rank 8, since she is a rank 8, she's a free extender. Uh, one Ogdo Abyss, the Ogdoatic Overlord. If it's in your graveyard, you can tribute three monsters, special summon this card, and while it's face spot in the field once, unfortunately it is a once while face spot in the field, you can send all monsters in the field to the graveyard except face up monster, special summon from the gra graveyard, and you can only use uh, each effect once per turn. Uh, why it's a once while face up on the field, you couldn't tell me. But that said, uh, he is a pretty decent boss monster. He's fucking huge. Um, he's, he's, he's not bad. Uh, three copies of Snake Rain. You're definitely familiar with this card. Pitch a card and then send four reptiles from your deck to the grave. Uh, Snake Rain is great. It does everything you, we could ever ask for. It's Snake Rain. Uh, two, copy, two copies of Reptilian Spawn. You have to banish Reptilian Monster from your graveyard. Special summon two Reptilian tokens. Uh, there's no restrictions on those tokens. They're fucking amazing. Um, two copies of Dark Balloon No More. We do want to be blind seconding because it turns on all of our Reptilians so that we have like targets to make zero. Oh, two copies of Lightning Storm. Again, more going second options. Uh, two copies of Octobotic Water Lily. We really don't want to see two more copies of this uh, than one in our hand, uh, and especially since we can search it with Nayuya. Uh, three copies of Reptilian Ramifications. You send a card from your hand to the graveyard and then you activate two of the effects in sequence. You add a Reptilian on from your deck to your hand, add in a reptilian spell trap from your deck to your hand, or change one opponent's monster's attack to zero. Uh, this card's fantastic, it searches spawn, it searches whichever uh, reptilian card we need. Uh, and then one reptilian recoil, you can target a monster you control with zero attack, and one dark reptile monster in your graveyard, destroy the monster on the field, and then special summon the other. And then if your opponent activates monster effect, you, can, you get to target a monster your opponent controls. Also, take control of it, and then special reptilian token that is zero attack, uh, level one, zero defense to your opponent's field, and you can only use each effect once per turn. It's great, it, you know, rips stuff away from your opponent, steals resources. Three copies of Droplet, again, we're blind seconding, and one copy of Planet Pollutant Virus. Uh, you tribute an alien monster, destroy all face-up monsters without eight counters your opponent controls until the end of your opponent's third turn after this card's activation. You put an eight counter on each monster they summon. This card does everything, it turns your guys into, uh, just, they, your opponent gets skill drain, and the game is basically over if you resolve this correctly. We have one Reptilian Hydro, um, if it's Synchro Summon, destroy as many monsters as possible, your opponent controls zero attack, and then you draw a card for each monster destroyed, which is fantastic for recurring advantage, as well as just, you know, cleaning up boards. Uh, one Reptilian Melusine, uh, if it's Synchro Summon, using only Reptile monsters as materials, it can't be destroyed by battle or card effects, and once per chain when your opponent's monster activates a card, activates a monster effect, you get to target a monster they control, change its attack to zero, which is really great for, you know, making them into zeros. Uh, one copy of Barone. Barone is fantastic. Uh, we have pretty simple ways to make it. Get with twos and fours. Uh, it's Barone. I don't think I have to say more. One math, one Geomathmic Final Sigma. Since we can make twelves really easily with all the eights and the four tuners we have, uh, she's awesome. We are on a UDF package since it's pretty easy for us to make two King of the Feral Limbs. Uh, just being able to set up a disruption if we're forced to go first is actually like kind of nice. Uh, we are on the Numeron Dragon OTK package because, uh, you know, we need a way to consistently OTK. Uh, one copy of Alien Shock Troops M-Frame. Again, it's just an extra tribute thing for Planet Pollutant Virus. It's, uh, it's basically a vanilla, but the important thing is that it's, it has Alien in its name. Uh, one Reptilian Enchilada. Enchilada is great. Uh, if it's linked summon, target a card your opponent 
controls, uh, chance of attack zero, and during the main phase, if your opponent controls a monster with zero attack, you get to add reptile monsters from your deck to your hand, and equal to the number of zero attack monsters your opponent controls. Unfortunately, that does then reptile lock you, but, you know, if you're doing that, you're probably going for the plant-knit pollutant virus combo, which basically ends the game anyways, so you're kind of okay with it. We then have one Cosmic Slicer Zerol, uh, which says, your monsters your opponent controls with eight counters are changed to defense position, also neither player can activate their effects, you can only use each effect of the follow each of the following effects of cosmic zero once per turn uh, if it's linked to them, you get to add a card from your deck to your hand that that mentions placing a counters uh and then you can remove two a counters from anywhere on the field and then immediately after this resolves a uh, normal summon a reptile uh the second effect doesn't really matter but the important effect is that you know he bagoose gives your opponent really badly and then we have one access code talker so with that let's hop into the very low ranked duels which include a whole lot of dark magician so Here's our first replay, and if you'll notice, some of the cards in my hand are not uh, what were in the list, and that is because I started recording before I, you know, was ready to go into ranked. But we'll start with Snake Rain, uh, Pitching Light Serpent, which is just a free summon if he's sent from the hand. Um, we'll bring back, of course, everyone's favorite Night Sworn Serpent, and then bin three others. We'll fire off uh, Monster Reborn, and as well as triggering uh, Nunu. Uh, from here, we will overlay, of course, for everybody's favorite uh, King of the Feral Imps. Um, and we will grab our uh, Reptilian, um, uh, the free summon one. We'll make a second King of the Feral Imps, because we're just nice. Um, King of the Feral Imps will let us search a second uh, copy of everyone's favorite uh, Therian. We'll overlay for UDF here, here, and then special out our ever so lovely Therian, but not before attributing off for Knight. Um, we'll special out our Therian, and, and overlay for Harbinger here. Uh, we'll pass back to our opponent with two interruptions. Um, and just attempt to let them play the game. They're on Dragon Link, and uh, we'll just end the game here as they will Saber Pitch 2, and we will immediately negate with UDF. So that's our Rookie 1 game out of the way. Now I know reaching Bronze is a very, very difficult task, but for our Bronze game, we are of course uh, just going to play against set T-Set Pass because, you know, I, I need a break sometimes. Um, if you'll notice, we're playing Kage Tokagi, which is great. We'll drop our Geki, and it's actually bricked up Sprite. We'll go for Nyao Nyao. Uh, we'll dump Nunu. Um, we'll fire off Nunu. Uh, and normal summon this copy of Koloti. We'll go for King of the Feral Limbs here. Unfortunately, we can't reach Lethal, which is kind of annoying. But it is what it is. We will grab another copy of Koloti. We'll special Koloti and go for another copy of King of the Feral Limbs. Uh, from here, we'll fire off King. We'll grab our cells, our Therian, and we'll overlay for the ever lovely UDF. Um, UDF is fantastic. Uh, he's, I, I, I can't believe it's a real thing that we get to play. We'll dump, of course, our great, great level 8 extender and special out our Therian. Therian will get in for a whole bunch of damage and then we'll overlay for everybody's favorite uh, rank 8, uh, Hope Harbinger, her, and pass back to our opponent. Uh, they need starter or bust if they've already bricked up, but unfortunately for us, they'll draw starter, which is good for them, and we will, of course, negate with Harbinger and steal that stuff. Um, from here, they will normal out red, which is uh, pretty good for them, and then special blue, they'll trigger blue, and we will UDF here. Um, they'll trigger chain red, but it doesn't really help them, uh, and then they'll chain smashers, which is just throwing, I don't know why they did this. Um, they'll banish our harbinger as well, which is, just feels like even more throwing. Uh, don't question me, this is the rookie plays. Um, they'll pass back to us, and we will just wrap up the game here. As you know, we already have a lethal on board. Um, however, I like to be a sore winner because I'm a monster. And we will, of course, uh, summon back our dark and give them back their red just to taunt them a little bit more. We'll go to battle and get in for the dark. Having reached the incredibly high highs of bronze, our, we'll allow our opponent to go first. And they are on uh, Scrap Dinosaur. Um, they'll go, uh, of course, Raptor for Chimera. Uh, Chimera bring back, Link off for Wyvern. Um, they'll go Wyvern and bring back, um, of course, Raptor, Pop Raptor, uh, and then summon out another Raptor, pop their back row, and it's a Dinomorphia trap. Um, they'll pass to us, and we'll draw uh, a Raigeki. They'll drop Max C in the draw phase, because they're, you know, evil, evil bastard. Uh, we'll drop Storm, and just uh, use Nyo 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 to dump, of course, Nyo Nyo, and pass back to our opponent. We don't want to give them any draws. They're on Dinomorphia, and they need a very, very, very good top deck. They'll set and pass back to us. Um, and we will immediately fire this Raigeki, and unfortunately I am going to get punished for being a little greedy, because it's a fucking pet, a Um, they'll special out Pankoff this, and we will special out 
Unio, uh, roll with a zero, roll zero this pank, pank, and then sink off for Hydra in order to force out uh, pank tops. Um, from here, they'll just, you know, chain pank because they don't want us to draw. We'll normal uh, this copy of Nyao Nyao, chain uh, uh, Kargate to Kargate, we'll grab Water Lily, and overlay for King of the Feral Imps. Uh, from here, we are pretty much in control of this game in its entirety. We will, of course, grab another extender, uh, and then make, of course, uh, our two tokens off of spawn. Um, from here, we will special out this copy of Koloti, and we will link off for uh, Slicer Zero, or we'll trigger Zero, in order to get ourselves a uh, Planet Pollutant Virus. From here, we will dump Ogdo Abyss, and special him back, we'll go to battle, and get in for a whole, whole bunch of damage. In main phase two, we'll link away Ogdo Abyss, uh, for the alien link, set Planet Pollutant Virus, and pass back to our opponent. Uh, at this point, the game is effectively over. We'll flip Planet Pollutant Virus, and the game is now done. Um, they will attempt to normal Therizia, but it doesn't matter as it's immediately changed to defense and negated. Um, from here, it's just a matter of putting enough numbers on board in order to reach lethal. Um, Reptilian spawn is exactly what we need to do so, and this is now uh, a very, very easy game. Um, we'll special out our two tokens and link off for Enchilada. We'll use Enchilada to make, uh, of course, uh, you know, our lovely Therizia zero, and then get in for lethal. So, we are again going second, because of course we want to go second, and we're up against the strangest pendulum player ever. I feel like I am, you know, the hydrogen bomb to this person's coughing baby. They'll grab Odd Eyes Park Arc Pendulum Dragon, they'll scale Arc Pendulum Dragon, but, you know, they've completely destroyed their scales, as they can only pend 9 and higher. Um, we will draw, uh, Kalodi, which is, you know, the best thing ever. We'll pitch Serpent for, um, uh, Droplet, because I don't see a better use for it, because we need an extender. We will normal out... Uh, Kalodi, link for Enchilada, and we'll use Enchilada to decrease it to zero. From here, we'll search out Nunu, um, as we really, really need more, you know, gas. Um, we'll dump, of course, our ever-lovely, lovely Dark, um, and special out our Therian, Therian, and then we will go in and get in for 23. Um, we'll pass back to our opponent, and I'm fairly confident that they have bricked up their scales so badly that they can't do anything, and I am, of course, right, except they drew Joker, and they'll add another Arc Pendulum Dragon instead of, you know, something good. They'll beat over Enchilada, unfortunately, and pass back to us. Um, the game is basically over here. Um, they added another Arc Pendulum Dragon for some reason, and I have no, you know, confidence in them. We'll tribute off in order to put an Octobatic on our board in order to special out Nunu, um, but first we're going to get in for a 200 damage. Um, um, instead, I'm just a dumbass and forgot to special Nunu, because, again, I am still learning this deck. Um, they'll set one and pass back. Um, again, early early ranks are going to be, you know, Hydrogen Bomb, Coffee and Bake. Um, but, you know, you gotta do what you gotta do to get to the interesting matches. We'll make King of the Feral Imps here, here, and it's better that I, you know, learn the deck. Um, we'll grab our royal copy of Nyao Nyao, um, which is great. We'll dump, of course, Zerborg. Uh, we'll pitch uh, this copy of the ever-lovely Octo Abyss, and then get in for a whole bunch of damage specifically 23, and then we'll pass back to our opponent. I have full confidence that they can't do anything because we are in bronze. I know it's riveting gameplay, and they will concede. So, if you haven't noticed, our hand right now is absolutely bonkers, and it's against DM because, you know, as if the hydrogen bomb couldn't have gotten any more, you know, coughing baby, um, etc, etc. We'll draw another spawn for turn, and that doesn't do anything for us, but we'll just drop a storm and, you know, clear everything. We'll normal summon now now, uh, and get immediately ashed. Uh, which sucks for us, but we're ultimately fine with that. They'll drop Max C, which is so fucking annoying. I mean, we'll sync off for, uh, Melusine, um, as I'm certain that they just can't out it. Um, we'll give them two draws because, uh, Max C's a bitch, uh, and pass back to our opponent. Um, they now are out-resourced us by, you know, having Max C. They'll drop Branded Fusion, which is so fucking annoying. Um, they'll grab, of course, uh, Lubellion, uh, Pitch Dark Magic. Um, we'll zero it because we can, and it's funny. Um, they'll make Mirror Jade, um, without reading our card, thankfully, and immediately go to battle. You know, from here, once they realize it can't be destroyed by battle, they will Mirror Jade, we will chain Melusine, and zero it. Uh, which means that we don't really have to worry about it. They'll, of course, use Rod for Circle, we'll fire Circle, and fortunately find nothing off the top. Uh, um, from here... We've drawn probably one of the best draws in our deck. Um, we'll start with Spawn here, uh, and uh, get ourselves two tokens. Um, from here, we are going to, of course, drop Lamia. We'll see their rod and take 1,600, and link off for Enchilada. From here, we need to search two, 
and we'll grab, of course, the Ethereum and uh, Nunu. Uh, from here, we'll drop Nunu and we will send, um, of course, Zerobolt. Uh, we want to trigger Zerobolt here when we sink, but we can't sink yet because, unfortunately for us, we have uh, locked ourselves into Crab Tiles, which I forgot about. They'll trigger Mirror Jade in the end phase, but we're ultimately kind of okay with it as we get our search. Um, so we will search uh, for a copy of Nunu and uh, Pitch. Pitch a copy of Dark Ruler No More because they're not going to do anything. It's DM. He'll draw souls because they're just the best player. He'll special at DM and poke us for 25. Um, and I'm not that nervous. They need another brand infusion to get out of this, but that back row does in fact scare me. Um, but I have full confidence in myself. Um, so we will start by pitching, of course, this dark for another copy of Zerpol. Uh, we'll normal, I'll uh, fire the effect, and now we just get to play for free here, even though it's imprint. It really sucks we don't get to water Lily, but, you know, who cares. Um, we'll switch out uh, uh, this copy of Nunu, and link off for everybody's favorite uh, non one per turn searcher. King of the Feral Imps, um, we'll grab Breeze, um, and then we will, uh, of course, drop Nayami. Nayami will zero the DM, and this is the end of the game. We'll make our tokens, and tribute off one of the tokens for a 2,000 beater. They'll get back Max C, and then immediately fire the Max C as we put back two copies of our guys into our crate. Uh, but it doesn't matter because we have Leaf on board. So if you haven't noticed already, I'm very much sick of playing DM, but you know, that's not up for me to decide. They've made us go first, so we'll just pass back to our opponent. Uh, they'll start with uh, a Magician Girl um, and grab Lemon Magician Girl, set one and poke us for 400 damage. At this point, I am very scared. But, um, you know, because you can never judge DM players, but whatever. Um, we'll normal Serpent, and they will immediately fire this coffin in order to get to uh, DM, which is completely fine with us. We'll Water Lily for Nunu, uh, Special out Nunu, and of course trigger Lamia. From here, we will Special out this copy of uh, Vasi, and then sync off for Baron. Um, you know, Baron kind of solos DM here. We'll pump for 3k and allow them to attempt to play the game. We'll set Droplet just in case uh, we need something for like Rod, um, which is exactly what we're gonna have to deal with here. Um, as they'll set one and set two and set three. They'll pass back to us and we will draw probably the best top deck in our deck. Uh, Nyawa uh, will pop their set card. They'll fire Threatening War, which we're completely fine with. Um, it is fucking Grave Keeper's Guard. Um, why, I don't know. We'll grab Lily uh, and dump Nayami. Uh, from here, we will just go to battle, but Unfortunately, Threatening War has completely ruined our time. Um, we'll let our opponent try to play. Uh, they'll set another two and pass back to us. Uh, and this Baron is just keeping them in check uh, more than they can possibly imagine. We drew Dark Ruler, which is a nothing card against DM. We'll pop their set card again. They'll drop um, this copy of Call of the Haunted, which we're completely fine with. And it's a fucking electromagnetic turtle. I can't. Man. Um, they'll drop uh, this copy of Destiny's Marvels to negate our board, but, you know, we don't really care. Baron still works, even if you negate the effect once, once, so we're ultimately fine with it. They'll drop uh, Secrets of Dark Magic in order to make this into a Dark Magicians, which is actually kind of great. They'll go to battle, and we will just drop uh, Forbidden Droplet in order to keep these Nyan uh, online, because uh, I really want to uh, sink it away. Um, I'm just desperate for anything to happen, because DM does nothing. Um, and we'll draw, and it's Reptilian uh, Ramifications, which is probably the best draw on the deck. From here, we'll just pop their copy of the Dark Magicians. We'll negate this, because I want to get to Lethal here. Uh, we'll drop Ramifications, and they will concede. So, ladies and gentlemen, it is time. It is our Silver Rank Up game, which means we are almost free from the hellhole that is DM. We'll set a card and pass back to us. Uh, this time, it's Blue Eyes instead of DM, you know? Big difference, I know. Uh, we'll start with Nunu. Um, we'll dump a uh, copy of Dark. We'll trigger Nunu in order to special summon herself. Uh, and then we will normal summon Nyawa and grab ourselves Water Lily. From here, we will make everybody's favorite King of the Feral Imps, because he's, he's, he's brazy. He's great. Um, we'll grab uh, this copy of the Arthurian Buddy, special uh, uh, this copy of Kotal. Um, and then we will tribute off our, our ever lovely King of the Feral Imps in order to make Final Sugma. Um, we'll drop Water Lily in order to bin a copy of Night Sword Serpent and bring back our four. From here we will sink off in order to get Mellow Seed, um, and we will trigger uh, this ever lovely copy of uh, the Therian. We'll go to battle, it's a white stone, we're completely fine with that. Um, they'll grab Blue Eyes, we don't care, we'll get in for a whole bunch of damage. Uh, and then in main two we will make, uh, I, I thought I made uh, 38, I guess I just have full confidence because it's Blue Eyes. Eyes. 
Um, they will know some maiden of with eyes of blue, set one to pass back to us, and from here this is the end of the game. Um, we'll draw Nib for turn, because, uh, you know, we don't need anything. Um, from here we'll bring back Nawa. Uh, we'll make another King of the Feral Limbs, because uh, he's crazy. Um, and we will make Harbinger, because I'm afraid this is true light, and I really don't want to get true lighted for my entire savings. Things, because I'm already going to have to crash with the blue eyes. Right, so we'll grab out our ever lovely um, Dark, and they will get to add back their uh, blue eyes. We'll pitch uh, Aquatic Abyss, which we're completely fine with. We will special out uh, our Kotal, um, and they will negate our attack and pitch with some of blue eyes. From here, we will crash our uh, copy of the ever lovely Sugma, and then get in for lethal. And, we are, and with that, we are free from the hellhole that is crawling. Uh, I'm hoping to make this a pretty consistent series as we try to climb up to Diamond. Um, it's going to be slow at the start, I know, but I have full confidence. If you enjoyed this content, make sure you like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.